So hey guys, uh, welcome to this presentation from Search to Sell, where I'll be showing you how you can leverage your category pages to essentially generate more organic traffic and more organic sales. So before we dive into the nitty gritty of the three strategies I want to share with you, I do want to quickly introduce who I am for those who are unaware. I had a really good, is it the next one? Sorry, apologies, there we go, newbie. So for those uh, who don't know me, my name is Joshua George. Yes, I know it's the most British name you could literally ever have. I've been doing SEO since 2015, and I own ClickSlice, an award-winning e-com-focused SEO agency in London. We currently work with 32 DTC brands across the world. Our three main markets are the UK, US, and Canada. Uh, and as, as you lovely said, <laughs> we've also done SEO training for the British government. So anyway, enough about me. Let's get into the strategies. So all the strategies I'm about to cover are all based on real data. There's no theory behind any of this. And these are the exact same strategies that we're using right now at the agency. And these are the same strategies that are proven to be effective. And we know this because we have access to all of our client Shopify analytics, and we can see how much money they are making. So to date, it's actually over 50 million pound in organic revenue. So strap yourself in, get excited. These are simple, but they produce amazing, amazing results when executed correctly. So whenever you're doing any type of SEO, it isn't just tied down to e-commerce. You always want to start with the basics, which is keyword research. Now there's four different types of keywords you can target. You can have information related keywords, which is where users are looking for specific information. You then have navigational keywords, where users are looking to navigate to a specific page on a website. You then have commercial keywords, where users are looking to investigate brands and products. And then last, you have my favorite type of keywords, transactional keywords, which have a lot of buyer intent. And these are the keywords that users use when they're looking to make a purchase. So typically speaking, to give you an example, right? I always love to give context. If you owned an e-commerce store selling men's razor blades, an example of an informational related keyword would be, how often should you change a razor blade? An example of a navigational keyword would be Gillette's blog, right? You want to navigate to the blog on Gillette's website. An example of a commercial keyword would be razor blade X versus razor blade Y. An example of a transactional keyword would simply be men's razor blades. Now, typically speaking, the lower you go down towards the bottom of these keyword types, the more difficult it is to rank. But on the flip side, the more money you're going to make. So I do a lot of sales calls at ClickSize. I actually handle all the sales now. On average, I probably do about 20 calls a week. And one of the biggest problems I see most e-com brands making, and which is why they never get results, is the core SEO strategy is literally focused on publishing blog posts after blog posts after blog posts after blog posts. And whilst that may be a good strategy if you're only focused on increasing your traffic in your Google Search Console, which I must admit that chart does look pretty good, but I like to call this traffic vanity traffic, right? Although it looks great, it's all informational related traffic. And only a small percentage of this traffic actually converts into sales. So for any agencies out there or consultants, you know, if you are focusing predominantly on blog posts as a main strategy to generate sales for your clients, then you're going to be in for a shock when the client calls you, or emails, I typically get calls, <laughs> when you have no organic sales six months later down the line. So yeah, vanity traffic is great, but it's not going to generate your store sales. So what do we focus primarily on at ClickSlice? So we focus primarily on the category page. And we have four reasons in particular. The first one is category pages by default. The type of the keywords you type, the type of the keywords you target on those page are always going to be transaction related keywords. So users will literally come to your page with a credit card in their hand, ready to make a purchase, just like this woman does every single day, holds a card smiling. You're targeting the right keywords. You have that buyer intent behind them. Some other pros of targeting category page keywords is they typically have higher monthly search volumes as well, right? So take a keyword like men's black shirts, right? That keyword alone is going to have higher monthly search volumes than men's black shirt from Zara product 012, right? Less people search for it. And if you're in the business of taking organic search seriously and making a lot of money from SEO, you need to be targeting these big keywords on your category page. Another reason why I recommend category pages over product URLs is they offer the user more choice, right? If I'm looking for a men's black shirt and I land on a product page on ASOS and it's a men's silk black shirt, I may want cotton. I'm not going to buy that product. If I land on a category page where there's hundreds of cotton shirts, hundreds of silk, hundreds of nylon, I'm more likely to make a choice, make a purchase, sorry, as I have more choice and it actually results in a better user experience. If you're ever unsure on what page you should be using, a really cool trick you could do is literally just review the SERP to determine the best page. So in this example, I searched on Ahrefs for yellow plant pots. And if you notice at the bulk of page one, the SERP is all 
product URLs, then forget the category page, rank your product URL. Like, don't try and reinvent the wheel. Google will literally show you the hand when you search for anything in Google. There's a lot of people I speak to that have all these fancy custom parameter URLs. Like, you, you don't need to do that. You can literally just review what's already working and then replicate that on your website. So we call this process reverse engineering, and it produces amazing results as essentially you're not making it up. You're following a proven blueprint, and you're pretty much guaranteed to get results if you had the same uh, same strategy from the start as the sites that are already ranking on page one. All right, so you know, we know what keywords you should be targeting and we know what page we should be using, right? But it doesn't mean you should go out there and target every transactional keyword. As if you target every relevant transactional keyword, it's actually a flawed strategy. And I'll give you an example that actually a client we work with right now. So this is a client called Cutthroat Club. They are a men's grooming brand, hence the reason why you use men's razor blades as an example. They sell their products in the US, UK, Canada, literally everywhere. Right, and this is the category page, selling straight razors. Another term for straight razors is cutthroat razors. And if you do some keyword research in SEMrush, AFSRES, doesn't matter what tool you use, you'll find lots of relevant transactional keywords, right? You've got straight razor kit, straight razor shaving kit, straight razor shave kit, men's straight razor kit. Actually, it always surprises me the different ways people search for the same thing. And then you have another set of transactional keywords, best straight razors, best shaving cream for straight razors, right? And we ask our client, like, how, how good are your products? We have the best products on the market, as they all say to us. So we want to also rank for best straight razors, target all the keywords on the same page, and let's dominate page one. If you did that, it's actually a flawed approach. Because if you look at the SERP for both of these different keywords, so on the left-hand side, we have page one for straight razor kit. And on the right-hand side, we have the SERP for best straight razor kit. So the only difference is putting the word best in. If you take all those results, 10 and 10, 20 results, only three web pages are common. So what that means is it's different search intent, and Google expects to see different pages for these different keywords. If you don't do this analysis properly, you're going to cause a lot of problems, and you're going to struggle to rank. And you know, when you look at your rankings and your traffic, you'll say, hey, my traffic hasn't gone up, and that's because you haven't done this core analysis from the start. So as a general rule of thumb, we recommend if the SERP similarity score is 60% above, then it has the same intent, which means you target both keywords on the same page. Anything less? break them up and go on separate pages. So now we cover that right, we can look at how we actually rank category pages. So the basic way to rank a category page is to include the keyword in the URL, include the keyword in the title tag, include the keyword in the H1 tag, and if you're lucky, build some links to the page. Now, I say if you're lucky, because we actually met up with our client this morning for coffee in Brighton, and they've been working with another agency in London for the last five months, and that agency didn't build any backlinks whatsoever. So, Although it should be pretty straightforward and is basic SEO, a lot of people still are not doing it. However, this approach is going to get you lots of results in most niches, and it does work very, very well. However, there's one problem with this basic approach, and that problem is that it's not always clear to Google what your page is about. So to understand what I mean here, let's take a step back and look at how Google works. So Google has this little spider. If you're scared of spiders, apologies for the spider on the screen. And the whole job of this spider, called Googlebot, is to crawl all the web pages on the internet read the content to understand what they're about, right? However, category pages are notoriously known for not having much content on them. You literally will have your title of the category page, you have your products, and that is it, right? So what happens is when Google crawls your site from time to time, it can struggle to understand what your page is about. And if Google doesn't know what your page is about, that, mean your pa that means your page has no relevancy, and Google is going to be confused. If Google's confused, that's going to result in low rankings, Low ranking results in low traffic, low traffic results in low organic revenue. So this is how we approach ranking category pages, which we call the pro way to rank category pages. We still do all of those four things I already discussed, keyword in URL, title tag, H1, and building links. What we also do is we implement our first strategy, which is adding TR content to the products um, below your category page. So I'll go through this and give an example in just a second. But TR stands for topically relevant. So the whole idea of this concept is you want to add content to the category page, which is relevant to the topic of the category page. So now when Googlebot comes back and crawls this category page, it clearly understands what the page is about. We've got more content on there. We've got more context. We're targeting more keywords. And the page has more topical relevance. So we've done this exact same thing from the client site I just showed you, Straight Razors. We had our content strategist, Holly, who is sitting there. She actually wrote this content and put it together. If you're at the back, hopefully you can see it. It's basically a mini buying buyer's guide, like what to consider 
when buying a straight razor, the metal, the handle, the blade, the point. We had more content below that as well. Cutthroats as sharp, sharp as you look. Nothing beat tradition, stainless steel, straight razors. And again, these are all keywords and we're increasing the relevancy of this page. We add it below the products and not above, so we don't have a negative impact on conversion rates. So now when Googlebot came back and crawled this page, there was no doubt to no doubt whatsoever what this page was about. And I know what you're thinking, really, we just add content on the page, like how much of an impact does that actually make? Well, we're actually going to show you the rankings for this exact page. So four <laughs> weeks later, just from adding the topically relevant content below the fold on this category page, you can see the client was dominating the top spots in the US globally for some really competitive keywords. You can see Cutthroat Razor, they now rank number one. Feel free to pull out your phone and check it after my talk, not now. And you can see they were initially in position 12, they went up 11 positions. So that's literally the top of page two to the top of page one. Not on page one, to the top of page one. Another example, the third keyword, Cutthroat Razors. You can see they've gone up four positions, so they rank number five, that's the middle of page one, and now they're ranking in the top spot on Google. And if anyone's done SEO and you've worked with sites that are already on page one, you'll know how difficult it is to rank from page five, or position five, I should say, to position one. That's a lot harder than going from page five to page one. So the higher you get, the more competitive the SERP gets as well. So again, super simple to do, super powerful. And when you add this content, do make sure you run it through tools like SERP or SEO. Just make sure, it just makes sure your keyword density is in line, internal links is all pretty much spot on. So that's the first strategy. The second strategy is building clusters around your category pages. So it's similar to the first, the first strategy in terms of what we want to achieve. We want to achieve more topical relevance for our category page, make it more clear to Google what our page is about, remove that confusion so we can rank higher. So remember what I showed you earlier in the presentation where most brands will just have the category page and they're just randomly publishing blog posts after blog posts and they treat them as two different separate entities. What we do is we leverage the blog posts specifically around our category pages. So sometimes we'll even write a blog post targeting a keyword that has no monthly search volumes. But we build it because we know we can build that topical relevance and make it clear to Google our category page is really what it's about. So in this example, if that category page was indeed selling plant pots, we would have a blog post, the pros and cons of plant pots, what, what material should you use for plant pots, the best color for whatever it is, right? It's about plant pots. It's relevant to the topic of that category of page. So there's two benefits of publishing these TR blogs. First, as I said, it helps increase your site's topical relevance. And the second is it helps you attract top of the funnel traffic as well. So notice how our strategy doesn't primarily focus on pushing blog posts as the main strategy. We use blog posts to leverage and build our clusters around the page we want to rank. So the same process, when Google now comes and starts reading all of our blog posts, they're all interlinking. We're not linking to any other random category pages. We're building that topical cluster. It's super siloed and there's no confusion whatsoever what our page is about. Now, a pro tip when you are publishing these blogs and you're linking them all together, let's say example again, same example I just showed you, we have a category page about plant pots. If you publish six blog posts, don't go and link all six of them to your category page saying plant pots, plant pots, plant pots. That's unnatural. It never happens and you're going to get your site most likely penalized and cause more harm than good. So what I recommend as a general rule of thumb, for your anchor text ratio distribution, go 45% branded. So if your website is called, let's say, Amazing Plant Pots, you're lucky enough to own that domain, you would link to your category page saying Amazing Plant Pots. That would be your branded anchor. Then go for 20% exact, exact match, so that would be Plant Pots. Go for 20% phrase match, so that's having your keyword in a sentence. So check out these Plant Pots, for example. 10% miscellaneous, so click here, learn more, read, read more, whatever it is, miscellaneous, right? You know, no keywords, non-branded. And my personal favorite is URL anchors. So that is where the whole URL is the anchor text. Now, these work really, really well. And the reason being is because by default, a URL anchor has your brand name in it and it also has your keyword. It's kind of a hybrid of a branded and exact, man, uh, exact match anchor. However, they're not the most user friendly for reading a blog post and there's just a massive URL in there. So use them sparingly. That's why I recommend you go for roughly 5% of the time. So again, giving more context, you know, going back to our original example for Cutthroat Club, Keywords you want to be targeting on your category page would be straight razor kits, honing zones for straight razors, which is all exactly done for the client, straight razor storage box, and then informational keywords, your blogs to support your category page would be do, do straight razors, give a close shave, what is the sharpest razor blade, and how to use a straight razor to line up a bid. It's so important you match the right keywords to the right page type. If you start targeting keywords 
for a blog on a category page, again, you're going to cause more problems and you're going to struggle to rank. Another pro tip when you're building out these clusters, do not be linking between one cluster to another. We've actually tested this a lot many years ago at the agency and still we get really good results for our clients just from doing this. But the more siloed you keep your cluster, the easier and the quicker it's going to be to tell Google this page is actually what we say it's about, which means you're going to rank quicker, generate more traffic and also make money a lot quicker too. As soon as you start cross-linking from one cluster to another, you're losing that topical relevancy that you just built. Now, don't get me wrong, there are times where naturally you want to link from one cluster to another, and it is okay to do from time to time. Just make sure you don't overdo it and you keep it as tightly knit as possible. Strategy number three is supercharging your clusters. So the first two strategies I ran through was all to do with relevancy, making it more clear to Google what your page is about. And in most non-competitive niches, you can just rank purely based off relevancy. But when you're going for a lot more larger keywords, more competition, higher monthly search volumes, relevancy isn't going to be enough. So this is where you need to look at incorporating authority into your topical cluster, which is the third strategy. And the easiest, fastest, most effective, and probably the most safest way to do this is to simply acquire high quality backlink. So you want to try and make the backlink as relevant, as authoritative as possible. So when we are building links for our clients, we only get links from sites that have a minimum of 1,000 monthly organic visitors and they have at least 500 keywords they rank for, right? So a lot of people build links from sites that look good on the surface level, but when you analyze them, the traffic in Ahrefs will just straight up and it will just tank. Someone's literally just bought that site, they've redirected it to increase the traffic so it looks good. They've got a high DR score because it's been inflated, which you can do on Fiverr. So again, yeah, you don't just want to look at how strong is that domain rating. It's a flawed metric. It can easily be manipulated literally for $5. So you want to be analyzing these sites you're getting backlinks from and a great way to do that is use organic traffic and the keywords the site appears for. So again, we've got an example of shavingweekly.com linking directly to our Mend Straight Razor page. That is a high quality backlink. Typically, when we build links for our clients, we primarily focus on guest post links for three main reasons. Is number one, we can control what site links to our client site. So when it comes to anything with SEO, really and truly, the more things you can control, the better. If you just you know, pull out a random PR campaign and you're not sure what page it's going to or what keyword you're using or what the intent of the PR is, you can, can have some issues. Um, you know, we like to use PR in tandem with guest posts every now and then, but guest post links definitely are by far one of the best links you can use for e-com sites. The second reason why we like to use guest post links is we can control the topic of the page linking to us. So again, we publish these blog posts to increase authority, but if we can control what page is linking to us, we also control a part of relevancy as relevancy too in that. So we can target relevancy and authority both in one backlink. Again, super, super powerful. And the third reason is we can completely control the anchor text. So we never have to worry about over-optimizing our page. We know exactly what the page is going to say when it links to us because we've sent them the content. Now, when it comes to building these links, do make sure you are building links to every page in your cluster. A lot of brands that I speak to on these discovery calls, and when I plug the site through Ahrefs, Literally, all the links are going to the category page, like if they even have links, but none of them are linking to the blog post. And again, that's unnatural. Like anything you publish on your site should have value, right? If not, why are you publishing it? So your blogs should be acquiring links. And when you actually build links to your blog posts as well, again, you're incorporating authority into that topical cluster that we've just established and built. So that's the three strategies. So the key takeaways is you want to go above and beyond to make it clear to Google what your category pages are about. Three proven strategies you can use to achieve that is adding topically relevant content on your category page, publishing topically relevant blogs and building out clusters, again, both for relevancy, and then finally building powerful links to all pages in your cluster. If you do that, then you're going to be like this guy. You're going to be absolutely winning. You're going to be sitting there with your supreme money guns and your life's going to be so much better as you don't have to worry about where your next sale is coming from. So my name's been Joshua George. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.